So here are the parts of the UFS-V2. First, the atomizer connector, which sits inside the collector tank. And this is the collector tank, already ribbed up with the air flow adjuster ring. Next is the bottom section of the tank itself. This is going to hold the atomizer and the juice. And here is the clear window. You also get a solid steel window, for want of a better terms, in case you don't want people to see what juice you're using. And then the top of the tank itself, onto which screws the top cap, which also has this new addition, which allows you to use any mouthpiece or drip tip that you care to mention. So let's put it together. The atomizer connector. And first, we need to put a little bit of grease on it. I'm using a silicon grease here, uh, which is, is cleared for food use and would be used on the likes of beer pumps and that kind of thing. So just a small amount smeared round the O-ring. And I think I'm probably gonna have to use my finger. I've run out of baby buds. So just a small amount of grease on there to lubricate the o-ring and make sure that there are no leaks from any juice that might fall down the atomizer connector and into the collector tank. So let's screw it together. Now the new atomizer connector is all steel and you will see that there is a little hole because it's not knurled and that's there to allow you to screw it up good and tight. This wants to be a tight fit. Tight as in I'm not going to say as tight as you can get it, but it's, it wants to be good and tight. The next job is to lube up and connect the bottom part of the tank assembly. And it wants lubed both on the threads and around the O-ring, which you can see there. And also just a little bit on the inside to lubricate the O-rings that are on the atomizer connector. Now that pushes in until you feel it click and then you screw and you might as well screw it all the way down that way you know that your o-rings are lubed if this is your first and now you're going to be ready to put in your atomizer now in this case it's an hh357 long and what you really do need to do is to pull the pin out. You want to get this atomizer in as far as it will go. All right. So, see if we can find the thread. I'm doing this at arm's length, watching what I'm doing on the camera, <laughs> and it's very, very difficult to get this threaded. Try again, David. Gently does it. That's it. Now, again, this wants to be tight. Don't be wimpy about it get it good and tight and now on with the window I like to be able to see the juice you might not you can choose which one you want to go with and again screw it down good and tight right, so it's not just caught it's as tight as you can get it we'll leave the steel one for another time and then on with the top section of the tank now you don't actually need to use any lubrication on this these two parts get them screwed good and tight you don't want any leaks at all okay now as you can see that atomizer is sticking quite a way up so now we've got to look at putting on the top part of the cap and you'll see how far through the atomizer sticks you'll also see that it's pushing out the o-ring which is just as well because I need to get some lube on there okay so luckily I've got some grease on my fingers still so that's it, silicon lube, not a lot, just enough. And we need to push that down. And then the new shorter top piece goes in. It's got two little indentations, which you can just see. I'll just push that in a little further. Where are your fingernails when you need them? Okay, so now find the threading and screw that down and the thing is to screw it down and then back it off a little bit or it'll all go horribly wrong as you will see in a few minutes when I demonstrate now I've taken that quite tight but that's basically the assembly and then the last thing 
stick your drip tip on and you're pretty much ready to go. It is slightly different from the original UFS, as I'll show you live in the studio, but now let's unscrew that top cap as though we're going to put some juice in without slackening that short nut off and you'll see what happens. Here we go and it unscrews the atomizer with it. You have to unscrew that top cap before you unscrew your atomizer. Okay, let's just check that that's tight. Take the pin out, tighten it down. And I'm gonna just pull the tank right up to the absolute top, ready to go. And the next job will be to put some juice into the system. So here we are. And um, because my original UFS is full of RY High 5, we're putting some RY6 into this. I'm not going to measure it because I can tell you now, you will get 5 mils if you take it right up to the brim, which is exactly what I'm doing. You'll have noticed that before we started this fill, I screwed the tank up to the top so that it met the atomizer, which is what you need to do to stop any juice from falling through into the collector tank. So there we go almost full to the brim and now it is and then we screw having slackened off that top nut the top of the tank on excuse my hairy hands that's better now you can see and as you see if it's gripping at all it'll be tightening the atomizer in there's a lot of threads here now that's down and just say tightened and then the gold drip tip goes in and that's it now all we need to do is connect it onto a GGTS so let's do that and here we have GGTS serial number 666 it's the beast in goes the IMR battery and you'll see I've left quite a gap screw it down and it fits beautifully, look at that. Not a gap to be seen. Tighten the battery up so that it makes a connection. Just making sure that that top nut is snug, but not over tight. It just wants to be snug. Battery up, make sure that the switch is in unlocked position and we're ready to go. And just opening that juice control teeny tiny amount let's give it a vip and I'm gonna voice over this one purely because I can first drag off the new UFS v2 with the HH357 in and that is delightful so while I take another drag it's back to me and Keith in the studio let's see what Keith thinks of it <laughs> <laughs> 